I guess it's time, yes. Yes, it's time. You're on time. So... Uh, right there. So in this uh, short presentation, I will describe what new features have appeared in the, in the iOS app during the last year or so. Uh, these can be classified based on from where they come like is it something that has been in, in desktop collabor office and LibreOffice for all the time, but hasn't been available in the app? Or is it uh, something that has been in web-based collabor online that hasn't earlier been in the app? And then it can all, we also have some mobile improvements that are now also then in the app and not very many features that are specific to iOS and some features that are like uh, for some reason especially mobile users want but and uh, have been then implemented initially for for iOS uh, things in desktop Collabor office that have been there for a long time, but that we haven't had in the mobile apps is like the Tesaros functionality. Uh, this was, as far as I recall, not even very hard to enable. Just had to change some settings that decide what we compile in into the code. And we then also bundle these thesauruses for a few languages. Uh, German and probably some other European languages, I don't remember exactly. Uh, for spell checking, we have, like until now, we have used the system spell checker for, for those languages where it exists. However, that was slightly problematic for Swiss German. Hello, Nicholas. Because uh, the iOS system dictionary for German that's uh, that uses the German German <laughs> spelling, and the Swiss they spell German slightly differently. So we have to use the separate bundled dictionary for that. And it seems to work. And uh, from things that were developed for, for the web-based online, we now have also, also in the iOS app is, for instance, this uh, editing of PDF files, where you can do simple things like uh, 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 rotate pages or, I guess, delete pages and things like that. And uh, if you watched Pedro's talk, all these improvements to the UI from for mobile devices in general, they of course are also present in, in the iOS app then. Uh, although there is some, some potential confusion there because uh, some of that is only for mobile phones and and the iOS app is mainly used, I think, on iPads. And uh, sometimes intentionally, but sometimes accidentally, uh, we use different UI for for mobile phones and for tablets. But if you notice any, any such inconsistencies, please do report report a bug about that. Uh, and uh, features that have been implemented specifically for iOS are not that many, but one thing that I could think of is this uh, font selector. And here it's like truly native. I mean, it uses the 
native iOS uh, control for that. Do they call it control or widget? I think they call it control. It is not something done in JavaScript, so it looks familiar from from other iOS app. But then on the other hand, it doesn't match the look and feel of our JavaScript based UI. Uh, we could use the same idea for, for the color selector too. But on the other hand, the, the JavaScript color selector also looks nice and works fine. So I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And this is how the font selector looks. It pops up this uh, floating smaller window that you can scroll then and, and choose a font. Uh, but I guess it's up to matter of taste whether you think this is uh, good or bad because it, as you see, it doesn't really look like the JavaScript things. And uh, one thing that uh, people who use mobile devices often want is emojis. And we had like lots of problems in Collabora online regarding emojis and other characters that uh, require two of these UTF-16 code units to, uh, because they are like not on the first, first um, what do you call it? Well, in the, in the basic multilingual plane. Uh, and then there are, are also these quite complicated characters, emojis, that consists of like several Unicode code points, like this male artist fellow here, that actually consists like of a one character that, the, that is like a, a male face. And then another another character that modifies it to be a, an artist, and then a third one that says he has a brownish skin color. And these now now work in the iOS app. Another similar class of emojis are uh, country flags. They consist of two characters that actually correspond to the two characters of of the country code in question. And these features were like mainly done for because of bug reports from for iOS, but they also now then work in the web based online. And that's all I have I had for this. So thank you.